In this video, we just briefly discuss the reflective property of parabolas. <coughs> and I wanted to show you a concrete example. And so here's the property, and this is the function we'll use to illustrate it. It says, let P be a point on the parabola. Then the tangent line to the parabola at P um, makes equal angles with the following lines. The line passing through P and the focus, and the line passing through P and parallel to the axis. So here, here's an example, and we're gonna use this example to illustrate this in just a minute. So we'll dissect this, but in the context of this concrete example. We can see from the equation of the parabola um, that when y is zero, x is zero. Since y is equal to some function of x squared, um, we know that this is a parabola that opens upward or downward. Um, if we divide it by four, it's typically what this would look like. We see the number in front of the x squared is positive, so this is a parabola facing up. Now, if this is the standard form of the equation of a parabola. I'm going to leave it in this form so that it's a little easier to identify P. Now, normally standard form is written with the perfect square on the left. Oops. And the variable to the first power on the right. So just by pattern matching, it says x minus h squared equals 4p times y, or y minus k. We're not subtracting anything from the x or the y, so the vertex of our parabola is 0, 0, which is exactly what we got when we just substituted in an x value. And we said 1x is 0, y clearly has to be 0 on this. Um, when I'm graphing this equation. Um, so just through pattern matching, we can see that we get a vertex of zero, zero, which is what we knew from, from this equation here or from this equation here. Now, but from this equation, we can also identify P. And the easiest way to identify P is to compare the coefficient of Y right here, that four P, or that four to that four P. Those have to be the same number. So if 4p equals 4, then p must be 1. Now since p is 1 and 1 is positive, that means the parabola opens upward. And if you're saying to yourself, how do you know it doesn't open to the right? Because y is raised to the first and x is squared. When y is raised to the first, the parabola opens upward or downward. When x is raised to the first, the parabola opens left or right. Um, so we've got the vertex. You know the focus is absolute value of p units from the vertex. And this parabola is opening upward. So our focus is here at um, y equals 1. And then I go the same number of units, absolute value of P units below the vertex to get a point on the directrix. So our directrix here is Y equals negative one. And I know my parabola opens upward. Now I know that zero, zero satisfies this equation. Now to, to find another set of points on this parabola, I might choose a value for y that would make this side positive so that I have x squared equal to positive number. And ideally, this side would be a perfect square. Um, so I'll let y equal 1. Then we'll have 4 times 1 equals x squared. So 4 equals x squared. So that means x equals plus or minus the square root of 4, so plus or minus 2. So we get a parabola that looks like this. It's not perfect, but that's the idea. Okay, so that's my parabola. And remember, you could write y this way. Now let's focus on this reflective property of parabolas and see what it really means. 
says, let P be any point on the parabola. Let's say we're talking about this point for x equals two and y equals zero. That's our point P. The tangent line to the parabola at P makes equal angles with the following lines. The line passing through P in the focus and the line passing through P and parallel to the axis. Okay, well, what does that mean? <coughs> well, let's find the equation of the tangent line right here. So that I can sketch the tangent line. If I solve for y, I get that. To find the equation of the tangent line, we know we need a slope and we need a point on the line. We already have a point on the line. When x is 2, y is 1. Because of this, we set y equal to 1 and we solve for x. And then the slope is the derivative of the function evaluated at that x value, 2. So I need to take the derivative of this. Derivative of 1 fourth x squared is 1 fourth times derivative of x squared. I bring my 2 down and multiply by x. So that's 1 half x. Then I evaluate it at x equals 2. 1 half times 2 is 1. So I have a line with a slope of 1 that passes through this point. I'm trying very hard to draw this to scale. So what does that mean? From this point, I go up 1 and over 1 to find another point on the line. And my tangent line looks like this roughly. Okay. So they said, let P be a point on the parabola. We, we did. The tangent line at the, up to the parabola at P makes equal angles with the following lines. The line passing through P and the focus. So here's the focus. There's P. So this is the angle between the focus and P, right there. Or the, this is the angle between um, the line that passes through P and the focus and the tangent line. And then I've got the tangent line and this also makes the same angle with the line passing through P and parallel to the axis. The axis is parallel to the y-axis. It actually happens to be the y-axis. So a line parallel to the y-axis would be the line x equals 2. Now this is not just true for this particular tangent line. This is true for all the tangent lines. But well, what does that mean? Well, that means, um, excuse me, if there is light coming in, Maybe this is, let's just say that this is a, a parabolic reflector. Um, if there's light coming in at this angle, when it comes in at this angle, this angle that it comes in at, that's called uh, the angle of incidence. So it's the angle that um, the light is coming in at, and it's the angle that that, that light makes uh, with that tangent line right there. That's called the angle of incidence. Um, the angle of reflection is the angle that it makes when it bounces back. So maybe the light's coming in over here and then it bounces over here. So that means is if I've got line, if I've got any light that's pointing this way, I can make it all concentrated at this single point. Um, because this angle over here is equal to that angle over there. Um, this, is, this is a property from physics. Um, we say that, let me write this down. In physics, we say this is true. And we, we call a surface reflective if the tangent line um, at any point on the surface makes equal angles equal 
equal angles with an incoming ray. and the resulting outgoing ray. So you're imagining light coming in at this angle, or light is coming in like this. What's gonna make this angle uh, with that tangent line? Well, it's gonna bounce back this way at an equal angle. Um, the angle corresponding to this ray coming in is called the angle of incidence. And the outgoing angle or outgoing ray, that outgoing ray's angle is called the angle of reflection. So a flat mirror has this property. Um, the light going in bounces off in such a way that um, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Um, so we call mirrors reflective. Um, para um, parabolic uh, reflectors uh, have that same property um, because this is true about um, all parabolas. All parabolas have this property that the tangent line with the parabola at P um, makes equal angles with lines that pass through P in the focus and lines that pass through P and are parallel to the axis. So we've got this light coming in here. It's going to bounce back and it's going to hit the focus. And the same thing is true at different points on the graph. So maybe at this point, I come over here, oops, I'm supposed to go straight down. It's gonna bounce like that. That angle and that angle are the same. The angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are the same. It works for all of them. Over here. You're saying to yourself, that can't be true. That angle and that angle, if I had drawn my graph correctly, would be the same. They're all gonna have that same angle of Incidence and angle of reflection, they'll, they'll be equal to each other if you had, if I had drawn my parabola correctly. Um, so that's just a property of parabolas. Um, so um, when we're trying to make telescopes, um, we use this property. Uh, basically, you've got all of this light coming in, then it gets focused right here. Um, but of course, you could also have a, like a lamp right here and light coming from here, and it would go over here and then bounce over there. And so we could have a flashlight that was created that way. Um, but that's the idea. This angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are the same for all of these lines. So we've got all these lines that are parallel to the y-axis coming in. They bounce off the parabola and hit the focus. Bounce off the parabola and hit the focus. Bounce off the parabola and hit the focus. And that angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are the same. So those two blue angles are the same. Those two purple angles are the same. Those two orange angles are the same. And if you're saying, what's well, curved, what do you mean they're the same? I mean that if I created a tangent line there, that angle with the tangent line on this side and the angle with the tangent line on that side would be the same. Um, so that's what's meant by the reflective property of parabolas. We've got one word problem in your homework that's related to that property.